Okay, great. Well, we're going to go ahead and unmute people who are joining us. So Jillian's going to go through and do that. If you uh, are joining us by audio and are on speakerphone or have some background noise, just go ahead and mute yourself locally and uh, uh, to, to keep the, the lines quiet. But uh, we like to have the lines open as much as possible. So bear with us while we just uh, get through and open them all up. Okay, well, I think we'll go ahead and get started. Welcome again, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today for the July Law Help Coordinators Call. This is Liz Keith. It's been a little while since I've been on this call, but I'm excited to be back and engaged in this group. I think, as most folks know, Xander Karsten, our Law Help Coordinator, has moved on from Pro Bono Net at the end of June to a new opportunity in the legal tech arena. So uh, Jillian and Mike and I are supporting the Law Help community in the meantime while we recruit and fill his position. So um, as always, if anybody has questions or needs around your law help projects, you can email our help desk or uh, us directly and uh, uh, we'd be happy to help out. Um, but for today, we are, uh, I'm going to toggle to our agenda here. So our focus today is going to be on a new TIG-funded effort that we have been working on with Legal Aid Services of Oklahoma, which includes a really nice enhancement to the Law Help platform to be able to present and display resources in a new format. And Margaret Shin, the OK Law uh, coordinator and uh, staff member at Legal Aid Services of Oklahoma has joined us today to walk us through the overall design of this project and how the guided uh, resource module fits into that. So that will be the, the centerpiece of our agenda today. And then we'll go through some additional platform and program updates at the end of the call. And as always, uh, open it up to any questions or needs or items that you want to pose to us or to your counterparts in other states. So um, thanks again, everybody, for joining us. Uh, I think we have a few people who just logged on. And Jillian is going through and unmuting everybody as we go. Uh, but just a reminder, if you have background noise or on speakerphone, if you can just mute yourselves locally, that would be great. Um, but we are happy to uh, take questions either by audio or through uh, the Q&A box along the way. So I'm uh, going to turn it over to Margaret. We're really delighted to have her here with us today and to have had the opportunity to partner with her and uh, her colleagues on this effort. And it has both law help and LHI components. So uh, those of you that are involved in LHI projects might be um, of interest or uh, might find that uh, th the way that this effort is leveraging LHI of interest as well. So uh, Margaret, I'll turn it over to you. Great. Thanks, Liz. Um, so uh, welcome, everybody, and thanks for your time this afternoon. We're really excited about this project. It's uh, kind of a standard A to J forms, online forms project, but we wanted to do a couple of new things. Next slide. Um, we wrapped it in an expungement content, um, but we wanted to do two new things, to develop the Guide Me module, the new way to display content on the Law Help side, and then also on the Law Help Interactive side, create a way um, much like the Citizenship Works events feature, but make it Events 2.0 um, to connect pro se litigants with pro se lawyers. Next slide. So the overall design, uh, we started with the Guide Me module where a pro se litigant would come and learn about expungement. It's a tab process you'll see. Um, and then at the end of that process, they've learned, they've developed um, a form to go get their background check. They come back with their background check, fill out uh, the first part of an interview about the request for an expungement and requesting a pro bono lawyer. And then inside the LHI event, uh, the interview um, is submitted, then the pro se is requesting a pro bono lawyer. So our pro bono coordinator can go and gather that information, make contact with the person, make sure they qualify for legal aids uh, pro bono services. And then the coordinator actually assigns that pro se litigant to a lawyer. The pro bono lawyer then goes in through a hot box interview, gathers the information, reviews the forms, reviews the information, and develops the instructions in the pro se uh, litigants' forms and letters, everything they're going to need, and works with that um, 
pro se offline a bit and then send some of the forms and instructions for them to finish the expungement request to the court. Next. Next. So here's a look at what it looks like now um, for expunging a criminal record. You can see we've used um, five tabs across the front. The Learn tab has a little question mark and uh, the icon, and then just the beginnings of this information page. Um, the tabs, the the text can be anything that you um, want. There's a limit overall to the width of the page, so if you chose long text and just a few tabs, maybe two, three tabs, you might be able to fill that screen. Or if you chose six or seven tabs, you may end up with it wrapping around to another line, but it pretty much works the same. And then the iconography, there's um, a couple of different choices of that in the back end, and I'll show you that next. So this is what the, the resource module, and I understand it's available across the platform. So this far right tab on the add a module, you'll just Click on that to add the module, and then on the next tab, we'll see kind of what that looks like a little bit. Um, you select your layout as you normally would. Um, under the name, name tab here, I, I filled that in. I think it uh, automatically defaults to information, and you can change it anyway. And then on the iconography, I couldn't get a screenshot of showing what those drop downs look like. There are four choices of iconography um, that you can mix and match however it is. Um, you see fit as you play with them. So this is a shot of what it looks like behind the scenes for the one um, page that I just showed you. You can see that you've selected uh, the tab Learn, and you put any um, uh, text in there that you want, and then below you've already selected Diagnography, and then you uh, add any type of other module that you want to fill out that particular text field. And then you select, um, you can see the next tab is FAQ. You select that module and then add any other modules underneath that and then move on down the page and it um, works to develop the tabs across the board. So our current version, I say current because we've just developed this with our uh, group and we're beginning some testing, starts with an information tab about uh, just a text field and a couple of um, bits of information that go down the page. And then the next one, the FAQ tab, um, we chose to use the new um, Guide Me module, uh, the new, I'm sorry, um, lost the word, expandable layout uh, for the FAQs. I think that's on the next slide. Um, so we really like the way, and our group really like the way this presented a really clean look. If you haven't played with this yet, I encourage you to do it. It, it makes a kind of a really clean display for the user. On the next tab, as far as this particular project goes, um, it's called Get Your Records. Because in this particular project, they need to go and get their OSBI background check and their criminal history report before a lawyer can look at it. We've tried a bunch of different ways, and it's working out best if someone reviews them. I don't know if you noticed or if you like or don't like the little chevrons that we've used to kind of indicate a flow. We tested it several different ways, and our group ended up liking the chevrons to try to in indicate some sort of flow across the page. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how um, users use that if they just jump right to the forms or how that goes. So at the end of this, get your records. Um, the user will go to um, an A to J interview. And this A to J interview is sort of outside the events module. This one, they will just go in, fill out the information. It'll um, and keep going. It'll gather typical information they need. It's just a standard A to J. And then the screen, it's the regular A to J interface, they can gather their document and the next screen it shows just a PDF form that we developed that allows them to go obtain their background check. So our next screen um, is after they've gotten their criminal history report, they need to come back and check it against the information that we've provided, but also it tends to be confusing. Um, it's an OSBI report, which is not easily found, be lots of pages at it. Um, but it is still kind of a public record, but it's different than the court records. So, uh, we've noticed a lot of errors back and forth and a lot of discrepancies. So um, we have people hopefully learn just a little bit more 
make sure they've got all their information and then when they go to the next tab, the forms tab, this is where they ask for help and this particular A to J interview is what's in the events LHI platform. So they'll go to the bottom and fill out, that, make the request for a volunteer lawyer. On the next screen, it kind of blows up just that section where we tell them this is going to be a little bit different than your normal A to J interview because this information is going to be shared. It's going to be shared with the legal aid volunteer and our pro bono coordinator. We give them an op a couple of different ways of getting the report to us, either mail or fax or scan it. Um, we have just a simple WUFU form online for them to scan and upload. We're working with partners, libraries, and workforce outlets and housing authorities um, to get people to this part so that hopefully they'll be able to figure out how to upload or fax or scan the reports into us. So on the next page you see the pro se goes not directly into an A to J, but into this new text that we'll, um, we don't have access to yet. We actually should have access any day now. It's being built up um, and all the final um, pieces are put together um, that will have the user agree to a little bit different um, uh, terms of, of agreement and then um, move forward through the process once they've accepted the terms on the next slide, it just shows that it addresses them personally. They've logged in and we know who they are. Um, and in the next slide, it's just that there they hit just a regular um, A to J interview. So I thought I'd show you a couple of behind the scenes screenshots that we, we think this is about what it's going to look like. We'll have more soon. The LHI side of it. Um, prior to this, the event coordinator or pro bono coordinator we'll go in and set up the event. So in our case, it's the expungement project and it's going to have only one interview that's actually tied to the event. And so when people fill out that second A to J interview, they'll be put into this event holding pattern. So it describes, you can see just event name, description, the interviews are going to be associated with, you can associate a number of interviews. I think right now we're going to just have an A to J and a hot dog interview is fun. Um, they've really integrated it well into the new platform with the organizations and uh, the coordinators and the, the lawyers you can assign to it. So and then on the next slide, when the pro bono lawyer has been assigned and gets an email saying, hey, you've been assigned this, go back to this screen, they can log into LHI, select the hot docs, they can look and see what the, uh, the A to J has completed, or they can just go right to the hot docs interview. And then next slide, it just shows you the hot docs interview that they'll go through and complete that based on the information they now have for their pro bono client, the OSB background check and any other records we've submitted to them. And then they can complete the hot box interview and then um, get that back to the pro se user, help them understand what the court hearings are going to be like. We have 77 counties in Oklahoma and so far three different ways to file these and three different types of court settings. But we're narrowing in on the <laughs> 77. So, um, and it's, um, we have outreach sites in four counties. We're getting briefly to um, generate interest among the pro bono lawyers. It's been greatly accepted. We have a, a small cadre of testers that we're going to be doing the first round with. Um, we have a self-help center in one of the rural communities, and we're working with our court and public libraries. And this project will also have life help support. Um, so we, um, the next slide shows just kind of our rollout. We're I'm actually getting access to the back end this week and really excited to begin testing with the initial set of training materials for our volunteer lawyers. Um, I'm continuing to do outreach with our partners, helping them see what it's going to look like and then um, testing in late in of August and um, launch hopefully in September. So that's the project. Does anybody have any questions? Great, thanks, Margaret. Uh, while we're waiting to see if folks have any questions, um, just a, a couple things to highlight for people who may have joined a little bit uh, after Margaret's presentation started. This project, one of the things that's especially exciting about it to me is it's combining um, a variety of technology, including uh, A2J, the uh, events expanding on the events capacity of LHI, and then uh, making improvements to, enhancements to how 
resources are presented within Law Help um, to really provide more of an um, end-to-end uh, support system for pro se litigants in uh, who need assistance from volunteer attorneys in completing their expungement um, pleadings. And the events feature, I think we've that that Margaret talked about in LHI. Uh, this group may have heard about at past TIGs or on LHI community calls. As Margaret said, that was something that was originally developed through our Citizenship Works project and designed to um, help facilitate the review of documents within clinics and large group processing workshops. One of the innovative aspect, aspects of the design of Margaret's project is it is um, expanding that feature to really facilitate more uh, kind of one-on-one -on -one asynchronous review of documents where a pro bono coordinator will, will be able to uh, share and assign an answer file to a, a, a pre-screened and pre-trained volunteer attorney uh, to review uh, those those documents on behalf of the litigants. So it's, it's uh, kind of opening this up beyond just a clinic-based sort of group processing model to more of a one-on-one, one-on-one uh, uh, -on -one service delivery, remote service delivery model. And then the two uh, two major enhancements to law help that uh, this group should should be aware of and that are available for people to take advantage of again are the um, expandable FAQ module or uh, expandable. Uh, uh, resource module that Margaret mentioned that gives you the ability to display FAQs in this in this uh, format, which I know at least one state, Texas Law Help, has a reg uh, already taken advantage of for um, some of their FAQs to be able to make those a little bit more um, compact here. And then the guided resource module, which the I think the the way in which um, it's being used in this instance and that Margaret has described is really providing um, an overview for somebody to understand uh, how they would go about ex uh, expunging their crim criminal record, getting their records, understanding their um, whether they qualify, and then uh, how to request assistance from uh, this pro bono project within Legal Aid Services of Oklahoma. Um, we've also talked with some law help coordinators who are interested in using this layout for what we call staging pages for law help interactive interviews, where you might need to provide a series of instructions that are both sort of a substantive introduction to the interview itself, as well as some sort of technical details about what kinds of um, software requirements or uh, 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 documents people might want to have on hand before beginning to complete an interview. So this provides another way of presenting that information um, in more of a guided sequential way. Uh, Way for users rather than some of the more sort of lengthy and, and um, dense models for staging pages that uh, 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 that, that um, I think can can happen when you're just trying to fit all of that information all onto to one resource page. So any any questions about uh, any of the components of this project, or uh, both the, the kind of technical components, or just overall program design? I have a question. This is John sure. Mayer. Hi, John. So first of all, this is awesome. I mean, taking t taking something even as simple as a as a an expungement, it it really illustrates that you know all the places where somebody could like fall off and get confused, and it tries to keep them on a you know, on a, on a path that's well lighted and, you know, gives them, you know, some hope that they can complete it themselves. The only thing I'm not, that I'm confused about is, uh, is near the end, how does a lawyer, either it's a legal aid lawyer or a pro bono uh, volunteer, how do they know when someone has submitted a request for help? How do they get informed mm -hmm. and, yeah. and come into the system? Mm -hmm. So, um, as part of the process, this event holds um, uh, the, the great details about what's going on and the different um, aspects of the event. And one of them is the ability for the pro bono coordinator to go in and when they see a pro se litigant has asked for help, they'll see their responses and be able to contact them, clear them for um, legal aid uh, or pro bono rules. And then um, they'll be able to um, assign this pro se 
to that lawyer. And it'll be selecting from lawyers who are members of the Health Interactive. So I don't have a, a slide of that particular process in here, but it's um, just a matching process where they take this answer file for this pro se, and when they do that, it initiates a email to the pro bono lawyer saying, you've, got, you've been assigned a case, here are the details, and then some text about go to this link and find this, and then we'll have done training um, with them in advance, um, especially for our pilot group, but then subsequent trainings, we're planning several other um, expungement CLEs this fall. So. Gotcha. So the expectation is that they'll respond within 24 hours or some small amount of time. Right. Right. And if they don't, our pro bono coordinator will be calling them and wrangling them. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Wrangle the those volunteers. Yeah. That's why we didn't. This is why we decided out of saying, "Would you like this case?" We just decided you've been assigned this case. So it works better. Yeah. So. Yeah, because you both want to. You want. You want to. Uh, I mean, I imagine there's an expectation management here. If the pro se thinks, oh, somebody will like text me back within 10 minutes, sort of thing, that's not that's that's unreasonable. Well, you know, but but then there's the the outer link. You know, within 24 hours, I'll get an email that tells me that uh, somebody has looked at this. Um, right. And so you have to be, you know, people are people are always in a big damn hurry. <laughs> you bet. And then they then they lose interest. Is kind of what we find. So we're we're um, hoping everybody has a little bit of patience as they go through this. That's why we're also managing this through outreach partners. So workforce um, employment, which is where this obstacle shows up quite a bit, and then um, with housing. Um, and I'm anxious to see how this works out with housing uh, because they're not necessarily always motivated to allow uh, folks with a criminal record into their housing units. But we're, <laughs> we're going to see how that plays out. But, but by training a lot for our outreach, those uh, case managers, those case workers will have a better expectation of how this is going to roll out and co-work with the clients to manage those expectations. Uh -huh. I imagine housing has more of a time constraint than an expungement because people are, uh, well, I don't know. I guess, I, 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 let me generalize that. D different legal matters will have different time constraints. You know, I need to like, you know, be in court tomorrow or I need to respond within 72 hours to this letter or something like that. And that's got to be part of the the scary part of this is if you miss a deadline, then something can, you know, people get mad. Well, when when Oklahoma statutes are written such that you're you're waiting a long time to get an expungement, you're we're, we're not through being mad at you quite yet. Even a couple of years after your misdemeanor, <laughs> we we are going to be mad at you for ten years after your felony, nonviolent felonies. So it's it's statute driven, and our statutes. I, I think this is going to um, sort of a byproduct is is help people maybe. In policy making, not that we will be able to give them that information, but someone might give them that information of how this um, plays out in real life for people. But there is the expectation of if you're in a job, you might get a better job or a different kind of job if these certain things can fall off your record. Mm -hmm. And with housing, I might get into a different type of housing or maybe qualify for a different type of mortgage or you know, whatever that might help. Gotcha. Thanks. We'll see. Yeah, thanks, John. Great questions. And as Margaret said, we're on PBNs and we're in the home stretch of uh, integrating some designs and making some refinements to the events capability on the LHI side of things. So uh, we're hoping to uh, to give Margaret a, a, a peek under the hood um, of that this week, and then we'll be working with her on piloting this uh, in Oklahoma over the next um two to three to six months through the end of the year. And then uh, we will be uh, looking to make this expanded events capability available to the broader LHI community as well. So um, as part of our work with Margaret, we're developing a user guide and we'll likely develop some other uh, uh, training and you know, support artifacts um, to help uh, work with other programs that are interested in adopting this um, this model for similar pro bono initiatives. So this is this is just kind of an early preview and in some ways a little bit more focused on the law help component of this project than the LHI component, but um, but we're really excited about about having the opportunity to work with uh, uh, Margaret to 
bring the events feature into the new LHI environment and then expand on that in a way that will hopefully enable other uh, models for pro bono service delivery that leverage um, A2J, HopDocs, um, online forms. So any other uh, questions or comments? Okay, great. Uh, well, thank you so much, Margaret. We appreciate you uh, sharing this with us today and look forward to working with you on the next stage of the project. Uh, I'm going to just jump ahead here to, or jump out to the next segment of our call. So, um, so just as we uh, transition here, just a reminder of the expandable FAQ module and the uh, guided resource module are available now on Law Help. If anybody has questions about how to take advantage of those or how those work, don't hesitate to email our help desk or uh, me directly and then hopefully we'll hear more about just the, the broader implementation of this project and how that unfolds over the next several months as, uh, as things progress um, uh, with on Margaret's end. So um, in terms of just overall platform and program updates, we have covered uh, this already. So the FAQ module and guided resource module are available now. There are a few additional screenshots in the deck uh, of how those work, but all of those controls are embedded within the existing resource module that uh, everybody on this call should be familiar with. A couple of other things we have rolled out in recent releases include um, a, a drop-down menu on the Find Legal Help search page that is pre-populated with county selections. So uh, we heard feedback from a couple of states, particularly particularly those with a lot of counties, that individual users um, didn't always know their county uh, or were just having some trouble getting a little bit stuck on that uh, box on the Find Legal Help page where they're being prompted to type in their county information. So um, this is now an optional addition. It's a setting in the content management system. So if it's something you would like us to turn on for counties in your state, uh, just email our help desk. That's easy enough to do. Uh, so that is available now and this screenshot is an example of what this looks like on Texas Law Help. Uh, we've also added some new filters to the resource and organization managers on LH3 to help uh, admins more readily generate various uh, reports or look at subsets of content on the site, including um, uh, a status, a new status drop-down menu, as well as uh, uh, having adding the date created column um, in the uh, resource and organizational filters. So, uh, so this uh, hopefully will give you the ability to more quickly drill down into subsets of resources or organizations that you need to review for content management or reporting purposes as well. Uh, we also uh, fixed an issue that uh, a couple people flagged for us that was preventing the date created values from displaying correctly in the downloadable content report. So that should uh, now be available. And then uh, we've also had several states very uh, be very actively engaged in expanding or developing their uh, mobile sites in the last few months so uh, we have in recent releases fixed an issue presenting or preventing mobile specific titles from appearing on that site and uh, uh, an issue that was causing certain mobile only resources to display in search results on uh, on law health so thanks to uh, uh, admins who flag those issues for us and then there's a much longer uh, set of release notes that we just published to the blog here that include a number of other improvements and enhancements and issues that have been resolved. So uh, uh, take a look at these. And if you have any questions about what's represented, again, don't hesitate to, uh, to reach out to, uh, to any of us about that. 
we also wanted to congratulate uh, Minnesota and Virginia on the launch of their mobile sites and Louisiana on the launch of uh, the Spanish version of their mobile site, which is the second Spanish language uh, mobile site in the Law Help Network and takes advantage of some new capacities that were developed uh, with New York last year to uh, add greater support for multilingual capabilities. Uh, or multilingual capabilities on law help sites. And then I think uh, we highlighted this on a previous call and on the listserv, but one of the other major uh, launches within the last few months was the launch of Ayuda Legal Puerto Rico, which is the first um, Spanish first uh, statewide website. And, uh, and we're really excited to have Puerto Rico join the Law Help Network and are now working with them on a com complimentary uh, pro bono site uh, on the Pro Bono Net platform. So uh, just a couple of other um, things we wanted to highlight here uh, uh, coming up on the, 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 the tech front that you'll probably hear about on calls over the next few months. We are actively working with the Northwest Justice Project on a TIG-funded effort to improve and expand Law Help's reporting capacities through adding support for universal analytics, kind of the next generation of Google Analytics on the Law Help platform, and adding support for uh, more on-demand reporting and custom dashboards that will provide more granular and um, accessible metrics on key areas that are of interest to the community. So we're working with um, NJP right now to identify um, the specific areas that would be most beneficial for on-demand reporting and have already started experimenting with several uh, custom dashboards that we hope to eventually make available to all of the sites on the, the Law Help platform. Um, and as part of that process are incorporating other suggestions and feedback we've heard from the community since we rolled on to LH3 about what kind of reporting needs would be, uh, uh, or what, what uh, reporting enhancements would be most would be most helpful. So we're excited to be um, off and running on that project. And then we are also working with Legal Assistance of Western New York and Law Help New York to uh, implement uh, custom treatment for resource results on Law Help New York. That will be a, a, a focus of our, our tech team over the next six months. And then we will also be working with those partners to scope and begin development for uh, a new uh, kind of tickler function on Law Help to support the decentralized maintenance of referral information on Law Help sites. Uh, so we're looking forward to uh, to moving ahead with with that as well. And then we'll be continuing just core work on the platform on uh, ongoing improvements and bug fixes as well. And we'll continue to keep the community apprised of that through the listserv and uh, the Law Help admin blog as well. So uh, we wanted to open it up now to any questions on any of the, the, the platform-related updates that we've covered or any general questions or updates that, uh, that anyone on this call wants to share or uh, questions that you want to pose to your counterparts in other states. Uh, feel free to jump in or type a question through the, the Q&A box and uh, we'll take it from there. Um, are we unmuted? Uh, you are. Yep, go ahead, Leah. Hi. Um, yeah, I really, I didn't totally understand how that guided resource module worked, and that looked really, both of these new things, the FAQ mo module and the guided resource module look really good. Um, can you just Sorry, it, it really wasn't clear to me how it worked. I wonder sure. if you could say a little more about it because sure. I think it would be something that would be helpful to us anyway. Sure. Let me just um, go back here to Margaret's uh, tabs, and then Margaret, feel free to jump in if I um, misstate anything in terms of how how you went about setting this up. But 
Um, Lee, as you probably know, in the resource manager right now on Law Help, you have the ability to select from different types of modules. And before we added this uh, sort of guided format, those modules generally could be um, listed in, in kind of a vertical layout. So you could have a couple of FAQs followed by a big chunk of just you know text followed by uh, links out to other resources. Um, with this guided module, there's the ability to, um, continue, to, to uh, continue to create those kinds of multi-part resources where you have one, you know, one resource that might have different uh, types of information and different modules contained in it, but they would actually uh, be available and display in a tabbed format. And you would select that tab format from the, this layout menu on uh, the resource manager. So there are a few different layout options um, where when you're creating a resource, you can uh, create resources that have more or less of the overall kind of branding and navigation from a law help site. And this new tab format is uh, now an option within that layout menu. Okay. So the process of constructing a resource, a, a guided resource is pretty similar. You're just selecting a different layout, uh, basically a different layout option along the way. And then as Margaret um, highlighted, you also have the ability to select from a predefined set of, of icons um, to, to help illustrate what each tab is about. A question mark, I think a document icon, I forget what the other two are, but those controls are all um, embedded within the resource manager. So it's, it's something if people are interested in experimenting with it, um, it should be available now. You can create uh, guided resources in draft format and, um, you know, and tinker with it that way to, to get a feel for it as well and maybe get some feedback from users or stakeholders on what the best uses of this are. What I, I really like about the approach that Margaret has taken again is, um, you know, we've, we've uh, I think, at, at Pro Bono Net and um, I, my sense is the community as a whole has sometimes struggled with the, the best way to present um, information, preparatory information in particular for somebody who is, is completing uh, an online form that exists on LHI and how do you prepare them, um, provide some general background on that issue but also help prepare them for what they need to know and what they need to have on hand before they click that link and get taken out to LHI. And I think one of the, um, you know, we've seen people create some really, some nicely constructed uh, resources, staging pages for that, but often they're kind of long um, or maybe have multiple parts to them and this provides a little bit of a, a, of a more kind of sequential way um, and uh, uh, with visual um, chunking and this flow uh, to, to help provide a, an alternative way to guide people through that process. So that's you know, one, I think one potential use case for this format. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I can see a lot of uses for it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Great. I've also, Liz, been looking at aggregating different types of content under one particular umbrella. I think that would be also useful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because in a way, it's it's a different way of of looking at what what we've created a couple of mini portals, mm -hmm. but is like a, a sort of different way of looking at it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we and in the design of this, we looked at a few different examples. Uh, Illinois Legal Aid Online has a, a similar sort of module. A lot of their legal education information is kind of bundled in a similar way. And then, um, Margaret, I think we looked at it was uh, consumer.gov and a site uh, legal information site in Canada as well, maybe one or two others with kind of similar designs. Um, but <coughs> folks might take a look in particular at, at uh, how Illinois Legal Aid Online is using a similar treatment um, if you're looking for inspiration. Okay. Great. Any other questions? Uh, Questions or comments? Just uh, kind of open, open questions or updates that folks want to share. Uh, um, can you hear me? This is Tim. 
Hi, Tim. Yep, go ahead. Uh, is there a way to get these um, guide me modules to replace subtopics? Like have, and when someone clicks on a subtopic, they just go straight to one of these guide me modules or a mini portal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's an interesting question. Um, I, I don't think there is right now because the subtopic list is dynamically generated based on uh, having content assigned to those those subtopics. So, uh, so the, those the subtopics that display on the home page or on that interim uh, page when people click on a topic are are uh, dynamically pulled in. But that's an interesting, um, I think, interesting concept to think about if you were if you wanted to actually sort of bundle all of the rele relevant information within a subtopic into into one of these to be able to send people directly here. What about just like having a, a redirect? Um, like an HT, like um, some some bit of code to redirect instead of replacing the subtopic. We just whatever they land on a subtopic page, it redirects automatically to a specific guide me module or a um, mini portal. A specific mini portal or resource. Yeah, that's a that's a great question. I can definitely uh, check with our tech team about that. And is that are are you um, asking about it for one particular subtopic or or more sort of generally across multiple subtopics? Uh, it just seems like it's we just want to try to reduce the number of clicks. And like if if folks if we like make spend a lot of time making one of these, I think we want folks to go there automatically instead of leaving it up to users to um, click. On the guide me module. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm yep. That's a that's a great question. That's, that's a good question because I'm concerned about that for our our mini portals, and I think we've just um, added them as a as a resource. You know, but it it's sort of a long way around. Mm -hmm. So that's really good to think about. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm yep. Uh, maximize because I don't think we're getting the visits to our mini portals that we should be getting because because of that. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yep. Yeah. I um I can definitely talk with our tech team about what would be involved, and then I think we would just need to think about you know if somebody clicks from a subtopic directly into a guide me or directly into a mini portal, um, sort of the 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 implications for how they might then navigate out to other uh, related content, whether there is other resource content or uh, other channels like the find a lawyer or find legal help channel or um, if people have, you know, going to court channels with other uh, information on related information, but that's organized in a categorically different way, how, um, how that would impact the, the, the sort of navigate navigability uh, back to those but I think that kind of subtopic assignment option as uh, as Margaret just um, put it in a in a chat is a really interesting idea great um, well any other questions or comments general project updates that folks want to share Okay, so we'll just wrap up with a couple of other um, updates then, which are uh, our next call in August will be uh, the pro bono net coordinator call. So we will reconvene the law help community uh, after Labor Day in September, but don't think about that. There's still a long summer ahead of you to enjoy. Um, uh, and then we do have, I wanted to make sure everybody was aware of the uh, fall training that we will be doing for Law Help Interactive and registration is available now. This is the second year in a row that we are doing this training in online mode rather than in person. And we got really good feedback last year about the fact that having this 
available online in a way that allowed people to join for a couple of hours a week over the course of several weeks was a, a good way to bring in more people who weren't able to take uh, two or three days away from uh, their day-to-day -day jobs to travel someplace. Um, so we, if, you, if you're interested or you know people in your programs or communities who would be interested, we uh, welcome your um, welcome people to, to, to register or uh, if you're interested in finding out just more about what will be covered, then feel free to reach out to me or um, Miranda. And that information is on the LHI support site. And then uh, also another just LHI plug, we are, Miranda this morning circulated a survey to the LHI community asking for feedback about um, your experience and the support that we provided throughout the rebuild testing and transition process and would really value any feedback that folks have um, from this group about if you were involved or this process, in, involved in this process or uh, related to your kind of law help work in any way, would really uh, welcome your feedback on um, what we did well and what we could do better on future major development um, projects like this on LHI. So uh, I, I think those are the main things. I think uh, the, if, if people are interested in attending the NLADA conference in the fall in New Orleans, uh, there is an open call now for workshop proposals and there is generally a, a pretty nice slate of technology and kind of online innovation proposals at that conference. So uh, if you're interested in, in pitching something, uh, it's a good time to, to do that. And if you have ideas for things you think should be um, represented on that agenda or workshops you'd like to uh, to see but maybe aren't able to, uh, to pitch yourselves, I'd welcome that feedback um, as well because we'll probably be putting a couple of in from PBN's side. So any other uh, questions or, or updates um, from anyone before we sign off? Okay, great. Well, thank you, uh, everybody, for joining us today. Thanks again to Margaret for uh, presenting and sharing your uh, work with us. And um, we'll look forward to talking with everybody again, uh, I'm sure, over email and then regrouping on this uh, the same forum in September. All right. Thanks, everyone.